quick intro then to the to the to the prompt that this group had, had responded to. We are looking at the ways in which, as uh, as cities shut down, as parts of them deemed essential stay open, um, to that are those that are able to uh, enable those. Uh, relays that we just saw, uh, of subsistence that we just saw before, societies are in a way pared down to these um, bare, bare functions of, of, of food and medicine and communications, not unlike perhaps uh, a moon base. Um, city centers have become human exclusion zones given over to serene neglect. Meanwhile, online organizations, as ours does, continue as improvised virtual versions of themselves and so forth. Supply chains are inter interrogated for having left essential needs vulnerable uh, without backups. Uh, and as we, as these, um, th this reduction to the most essential uh, uh, is, is, is finalized then as this, the, those of the industrial interconnections of signal and transmission and metabolism. Now, um, the awareness of this does not necessarily in any sense make this easier to model or to control or to intervene or to try to extend the uh, the uh, uh, care more broadly. As the RNA code of COVID hacks our cells, it, it in turn starts a, as we've seen, is a, a kind of domino effect of consequences um, that alters not only uh, the movement of people, um, but affects uh, cycles of energy, materialization, expenditure, and waste uh, in second tertiary uh, uh, orders of effect. Um, this is, in a way, uh, an example of the ecological principle of trophic cascade, um, by which the agency of one form of life sets in motion changes elsewhere with outside effect. And that is the starting point for this, this, this particular research. What they are looking at is these cycles, but cycles of information, cycles of virality and contagion, cycles of supply chains and materialization and waste, all intermingle. Um, and how questions of resiliency, uh, involve, uh, resiliency and efficiency involve both uh, not only redundancy within essential supplies uh, and capacity, but also some degree of, 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 of control in the cybernetic sense over um, pathological runaway auto amplification effects and through, through a series of case studies uh, of a some of these panic cycles where we see these uh, ex this kinds of accelerations in loops, uh, it becomes clear that they are uh, equally uh, psychiatric as they are logistical. So uh, with that, I'll pass the pass our, our microphone to the planetary metabolism group. Uh, hello, this is Ani from Planetary Metabolism Group. I'm from Hyderabad, India. Hi, this is Laura from Italy. I'm currently in Berlin. Hi, my name is Marina and uh, I'm locked in an apartment in Moscow. Hello, I'm Yulia. I'm gonna, yes, I'm in Moscow as well, quarantine in here. And I'm gonna be presenting our work today. So I'm presenting the work called Anatomy of a Trojan Horse. The inception of the coronavirus pandemic took place right at the junction between the human and the animal ecosystems. Throughout its exponential ramifications, the virus has physically mapped the network of interdependencies of infrastructure, raw materials, transportation and energy, making visible how all living and non-living beings are nodes of the same planetary metabolism. A virus is a genetic parasite. It injects its genetic code into its host cells and hijacks them, turning them to its purposes, to multiply it exp at an exponential scale. The behavior of the virus transforms the DNA of living organisms. Virus is an agent that transforms matter through information. The COVID-19 outbreak is the first pandemic to happen in the time of social media, which had a profound impact on the way we consume and circulate information and contribute to the progress, progressive erosion of the public trust for the media and institutions. An infodemic has been growing and spreading in parallel with the viral pandemic. In past 10 years, we have witnessed an unprecedented acceleration of the information flow. But information like a virus does not replicate in a vacuum. It needs the interaction with the unpredictable behavior and movements of humans. Social media lowers the barriers of information quality to enter the circulation, spreads it following obscure algorithms, 
and tricks people in trusting the doubtful sources just because information is forwarded by their trusted network. The speed of mediation, accelerated even more by the emergency, creates the crisis as it surpasses what happens on the ground, reduces it, encapsulates it and sells it as pills of panic to the public. As an excessive amount of information concerning a problem can undermine the possibility to solve that problem, how can we distinguish the noise from the signal? We have observed multiple accounts of how information was disrupting the flows in the past months, starting with multiple stories of the panic buying, eventually leading to the fluctuations of market prices of goods, leading to the export bans on the planetary level. Other cases showed how information, disinformation, or their interpretations are altering the speed and the ways in which the virus itself spreads. Mapping some of them in detail, we try to understand what is going on with the emergency metabolism of information. For example, amidst the COVID-19 pan pan pandemics in India, the second in the world producer of eggs and the fourth of chicken meat is facing the worst crisis of the poultry industry in decades caused by fake news. So normally poultry in India is mostly distributed through the wet market, which implies bringing there the living chicken and not storing the meat in any way. While virus was starting to spread in China, first news, both correct and fake, started to appear in the Indian media. As chicken can have their own version of coronavirus, some people launched the hopes that humans can get infected through the meat consumption. Fake newspaper clippings claim that the health department cautioned people from eating poultry hands. It spread through the social media with accelerated pace. Especially using WhatsApp, people shared the fake news in a more rapid way among their friends and relatives who tend to blindly trust the information coming from their direct contacts. Eventually, the social media platform and local authorities detected the spread of fake news and rumors, but it was already too late. Enough people were convinced that chicken meat was dangerous and stopped consuming and put all the industry under pressure. More and more chicken were growing in the farms while they could not be sold at the market. Government intervened addressing the public to convince them that chicken meat is perfectly safe, but they could not help much. As two things came together, the fake news and the impossibility to store uh, the meat uh, in the wet market distribution model, farmers had no choice but to bury the unconsumed chicken that they could not go on feeding. Absence of income for them means also no payments for all the suppliers in the ecosystem, from equipment producers to soybean farmers, causing the estimated damage of at least $21 million per day. Not all the examples are so extreme, but as we map different case studies, we can understand the underlying similarity in their structure made of the supply chain, regulatory layer, and the virus disrupting the normal flow of events. Normally, on the regulatory layer, information affects the supply chain, controlling the production and how it adjusts to various conditions and prices. Instead, in the current situation, we have the virus layer which is affecting the regulator layer, making it turn in the opposite direction. Information coming from the media regarding the virus is accelerating the demand in such a way that supply turns not capable to adapt promptly. The promise of constant abundance made by capitalism is suddenly threatened by the images of the empty shelves resembling the worst community deficit years. Disrupting the supply chains, information is also getting embedded in the overall planetary metabolism. The whole process of the circulation of flows and transformation of energy and matter on the planetary scale. As Kim Stanley Robinson noticed in a recent discussion with us, consumption habits changing is a kind of geoengineering. Therefore, information influencing them becomes a tool of the terraforming. But the virus itself is also a piece of information coded in RNA. So what happens with the system is a double informational attack on the flow of goods. As we observe this isomorphic nature of virus and the information circulating on media, can we think of applying the same epidemiological measures to control the infodemics? We would like to explore various measures starting with flattening the curve of disinformation transmission to testing and isolating fake news better on the level of media platforms 
Moving to the more broad measures like immunization of the population to misinformation, increasing the level of digital literacy, improving the future preparedness of the infrastructures to pick the weaker signals before it's too late and respond to emergencies more flexibly. We are mapping the constellation of top-down and bottom-up initiatives to regulate the flow of information, detect fake news, inaccuracies and manipulation. We are looking at a comparative analysis of when information flows from government officials, institutions, mainstream media and social networks were coherent and consistent to determine the extent of the positive impact on markets and on the spread, spread of the virus itself. As the current pandemic is only one of the possible disasters awaiting us with the coming age of the changing climate, we need to understand how to use information better in the moments of emergency, all in order to find the better ways to regulate the regulator. Thank you. Thank you guys uh, for the excellent, excellent intervention. Um, so Nikolai Boyajev, one of our, our core faculty in the program, has been monitoring some of the, um, the questions we're posting online. I wanted to turn it over to Nikolai to uh, see what we want to address there. Uh, th thanks, Benjamin. And thank you, everyone, for posting the, the questions. I'm following with, uh, with great uh, interest. I, I could start maybe with uh, one from uh, Marty uh, Paloero, who is asking about, uh, I guess, uh, the, um, the link, or he's going to read it out loud. Is surveillance quarantine the logical result of surveillance capitalism, or maybe just uh, more broadly, perhaps the link between surveillance capitalism and uh, the concept of quarantine within our program? Right, thank you. Um, yes, uh, it's a, a, a question uh, so right on point. Um, I, and I, I suppose the the precise answer is that it, it could be, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, one of the one of the things that we've been um, we've been working with fairly from the beginning of the program, and this relates to re some reason relates to the earlier question about simulations, about the, the role, the, the, what is the proper role of sensing and modeling uh, how it is a society comes to recursively know itself so that it actually can act back upon itself. Um, there, one of the things that we've been considering really, I think quite seriously, is how it is, the, the limits and potential additional problems that are introduced when we expand the notion and concept in term of, of surveillance, uh, in, in scare quotes here, to describe and indeed uh, uh, to, to explicitly or implicitly condemn all forms of sensing modeling by which uh, society might might act, act, act back upon itself. Um, this is not to say that surveillance isn't real. This is not to say that surveillance isn't a word that we should use anymore. It's to say that we need additional words. We need, in additionally, we need a more nuanced vocabulary and conceptual and literal vocabulary to describe the range of possible phenomenon here from ones that are clearly, um, and Jeff addressed some of these as, Jeff addressed some of these as well, um, that would constitute a form of, of surveillance in the, in the classical Foucauldian sense of, of, of surveillance, um, but to also uh, make space for the, the, the ways in which things like robust, robust testing, anonymizing encrypted tracking apps, uh, 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 infection, infection tracking, and so forth and so on, um, is absolutely necessary to the provision of, 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 the, of uh, general care and that at certain points it becomes less helpful um, and indeed uh, less, less beneficial for all to refer to these only, only through the rubric and lens of, 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 of surveillance per se. And so the, uh, the, again, the, perhaps an, uh, one of the alternative models to thinking about how, uh, what some of the alternatives for forms of, of, of sensing and modeling that we would not that, that we do think have governing capacity but do not would not qualify as, as surveillance or it wouldn't be useful to call surveillance might be something like climate science um, which is itself a, an enormous a planetary scale uh, biopolitical sensing modeling and simulation apparatus uh, that is quite importantly not focusing on individual persons um, but on the material flows that constitute the basis of of individual and, and uh, collective life, and and in in the best sense, we would hope that 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 is sort of the direction and pattern by which the 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 use of information technology as part of a, a more viable epidemiological mode of society uh, would would take would take its inspiration. 
Um, the other, uh, the, the path uh, that might, looks more like what we people have come to recognize as surveillance capitalism, which is the over-individuation uh, of the base unit of analysis, the optimization of systems to reward the spontaneous desires of of clicking and clicking and looking, uh, uh, the capitalization of, of those vectors and so forth and so on, is not the only way this can go. Uh, and so uh, for that reason, again, we want to expand this term to by which we, when we speak of surveillance, we're being much more, much more specific and don't, don't, uh, don't let the, the, the pound of prevention, prevention uh, miss, uh, prevent the path towards uh, the version of the system we might want. So was that the one that we, was that, um, are there others or we, we would maybe, what would the prime would be appropriate to address at the time? Uh, I want to make sure that we're, yeah, go ahead. Yes, there was another question uh, uh, around the time of the quarantine uh, conversation uh, with uh, Jeff and the of the quarantine group from Juanico Moreno asking uh, if we, would you see the pop up of several liminal spaces in nation states within its borders uh, as, as a result of the coronavirus, uh, like some things like uh, free ports or special economic zones uh, emerging as a consequence of this uh, phenomenon? Yeah, um, so unfortunately, Jeff and Nicola had to go. They won't be able to, wouldn't be able to answer this question directly, but I'm sure would do so um, with a bit more eloquently than I can. Um, I guess the answer to the question really is how long this lasts um, and how, how permanent this state, this liminal state um, actually becomes. I think the key point that they, had, that they had made is it's not only that there is this stable territorial order and then, the, and then there is this, these peculiar interruptions of liminal spaces of quarantine or immunology or defense or so forth and so on from then. In many cases, that territorial order that we've come to, that we've inhabited from, for, for all of our lives and for generations hence is the result um, of exactly the, the inscriptions of these kinds of, uh, uh, these kinds of supposedly defensible spaces in one way or another. And indeed, as even, uh, you know, as Beatrice Colomina's architectural historian's work makes perfectly clear, even the, the history of modern architecture, its use of, 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 of materials and surfaces that have a, uh, 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 an antiseptic uh, and, and anesthetizing effect uh, is part of, a, uh, part of that, public health, that public health regime uh, as well. Uh, and so I, I guess the, uh, the range of possible answers we would have here would go from um, uh, perhaps not at the scale of free ports, at least at the scale of the nation state, um, to on the other end, uh, of course, inevitably, inevitably we will, uh, because that's how we've been making territory uh, all along, for better and worse. Um, I, I think that, um, thank you everyone for, for, for posting the, the questions on the chat. I think we should, we, we probably need to move on to the third blog, but please continue to write everything on, on the chat and hopefully our researchers and ourselves can continue to uh, keep the conversation going. Okay, great, thank you. <laughs>